Thank you for your thousand likes. It was all stored in the jar of appreciation. Here is a second part of the Manoa, Villainous in Love, or the Evil Lady's Hero. A little recap on part one before we start. The supposed main female lead became Unifer's mentee, opening a maybe perhaps possibly Yuri route for our Unifer. The male lead doesn't really like Raal because he felt rivalry. And we found out that poor Raal was avoided badly by Unifer during the Academy days. Thus, we possibly need to add another Yandere character to the mix. Oh, do you guys like a video for part 3? When this one reaches another thousand likes, I'll start making the story, because I need to know if many of you wanted the third part or not. This also gives me some time to make other videos, sorry if it is late, and thanks for supporting the channel. Continuing on. Inside the carriage, Unifer patted the raindrops from her outfit when she heard Isha chuckled. What's so funny? she asked. Nothing, it's just the mere sight of you fills me with delight that I just can't stop laughing. The man, just like his cheesy girlfriend, flirted. However, cheesy flirts 100% works when you are dating. Unifer told Ishid that he was the one who made her feel even better and brush off the water droplets from his bangs. She told him that he is beautiful. Ishid was taken aback from the comment and looked at his reflection at the window. The only thing he could remember is his father calling him a demon spawn. He asked Unifer if she considers him beautiful. The girl thought that he is beautiful even when he's asking that question to her. Unifer asked if Isha doesn't know that he is handsome, and the guy is clearly oblivious of anything like that. It does pains Unifer that although Isha's beauty is obvious to other people, he is unaware of it because nobody told it to him. How hurt was Isha to even fail to notice such an obvious fact? She slowly told the man, from the bottom of her heart, that he is very beautiful. The man thought that she felt sorry for him. Although many people were saddened by him but never one that was saddened for him until now. Knowing that she feels sorry for him made him both happy and sad. Although it might be selfish, the man is happy that she felt anything for him, but if he could pick any emotion, he would prefer her to feel pure joy instead. Ishid asked which part of his body makes Unifer feel happy. His whole being sparkle and shine in happiness. He wanted to present his best side to her to make her happy. Unifer was sad for the man, she complimented him for his sake, but he made it to be for her happiness instead. She likes everything about Ishid and she doesn't know where to start. She started complimenting his pretty hair and before she could proceed to his eyes. She quickly stopped the man from trying to burn his hair. The man was trying to cut off his hair and present it to her since she liked it so much. Unifer was getting tired from the Ishid logic. The man in front of her is willing to give her anything she wants. She is seriously scared that if she told him she likes his heart, he would really take it out for her. Unifer needs to set this man straight. She did a reverse psychology and asked him which part of her that Ishid likes. She told him to just choose one part. Ishid's mental cartwheels did a whole run around the earth and still cannot decide on which part. Unifer decided to help him choose. She decided on her eyes that he liked best, but she noticed his eyes glanced towards her fingers. Do you like my hands? She waved her hands, his gaze focused on her lips. My lips? His gaze lowered to her legs. My feet? This whole thing could go on forever so she decided on the eyes for him. She asked if her eyes are beautiful and he agreed that they are very beautiful. Then imagine that my eyes are plucked out and you're holding them in your hands. That escalated quickly into a horror genre. Ishid's eyes was filled with sadness and horror. How would you feel then? She pressed on. I would want to unalive myself. That's how I feel when you tried to cut off your hair for me. Unifer told him sadly. Ishid asked if he had made her upset but she told him that he made her sad instead. Unifer touched his hand, saying that seeing him sad makes her sad as well because not cherishing yourself saddens those who cherish you. She told Ishid that she cherishes him with her whole heart. 
she told Ishid that his beauty is solely his own and not for other people's pleasure. He asked her if he could use it for himself and of course she said of course. The male lead asked her how to utilize his beauty for himself and Unifer thought a bit before caressing his cheek. I like when your eyes bend like crescent moons when you smile broadly. She said lovingly. He swiftly grabbed her hand and gave her a warm and charming smile. Like this? He asked. RMC was dazed in his beauty before quickly saving her heart from bursting from that smile. Suddenly, she noticed that the umbrella Ishid brought was cracked. She took it and inspected it. The material was quite sturdy, but it almost looked like the grip was crushed with brute force. Ishid became silent, thinking about what to reply her. Abruptly, she exclaimed and the man braced himself for questioning. But what came was her hoping that this isn't Ishid's favorite umbrella. He was slightly surprised at the comment, but he decided to tell her that his possessions have a tendency to crack and break, including his clock at the office. Unifer tried to make him feel better by saying that nothing is immune to wear and tear of time. Ishid looked at her, his expression concerned. Don't worry, I'm not an object so I won't break. She read his mind and consoled him. Then, will you always stay by my side? He grabbed her hand, his voice desperate. Unifer didn't know if she could always be with him due to the original novel, but she did tell him what he hoped to hear and hugged the man. Ishid squeezed her more and it started to escalate to him nibbling on her neck. The atmosphere suddenly became hot. He gazed at his girlfriend and asked if he could untie her shirt. No? Seeing that Unifer didn't respond to him, he gave up trying to untie the ribbon. However, she untied it herself and took off her outer cape. She asked seductively if they should kiss and the man immediately took the bait. The kiss was hot and intense. They pulled away when both of them were out of breath. As Ishid was making out with Unifer, his mana started to fluctuate with his emotions and transferred the heat to Unifer. Before they could finish making out, the carriage stopped, indicating that they've arrived at their destination. Ishid quickly covered her with her outer cape, his gestures careful and gentle as he helped her tie her bow back. Suddenly, Unifer asked if he would like to come by her room. Ishid froze from the unexpected invitation. He tried to confirm with Unifer once again, and told her that he would gladly come to her room. It was still raining outside and Ishid escorted her out from the carriage. Unifer smugly asked if Ishid is nervous, although it's their second night together. He admitted that he's a little nervous. Unifer jokingly asked if he doesn't trust her and that she is perfectly sober this time. It's not you. It is myself whom I cannot trust. Ishid said ever so straightforwardly which even made the experienced Unifer blushed. She told him that they could do things slowly and lovingly because she isn't drunk and wasn't out of her mind. The man in front of her abruptly stopped in his tracks which caused her nearly bumping into him. She asked him why did he stop but her heart nearly stopped when she saw her father standing outside the gate, waiting for her with an umbrella. Both daughter and father made eye contact and Unifer dreaded if the Count heard her flirts just now. Count Magnolia Ishid greeted instantly and his girlfriend flinched. She glared at him because his way of calling her father sounded like someone of higher status would call. Technically, he is the Grand Duke of Lacrens, but it may not be a polite way to address your future father-in-law. Ishid immediately changed to address Unifer's father as Lord Magnolia. Even the Count was confused by the unsuspected politeness but he also greeted back. Good evening, Your Grace. Quite a. A flash of lightning accompanied with the thunder rumbling could be heard in a distance. All of them stood in silence and the count continued. Unpleasant weather we have today. Unifer tried to clear the awkwardness by commenting that the thunder is so thunderous. The count is unfazed by the joke. Isha just chimed in with her joke. She could feel a throbbing headache from the awkwardness. Suddenly, she noticed that the Count was holding her umbrella in his hand, her dad came out to meet her because she left her umbrella. This is so wholesome. Ishid tried to excuse himself from the family but Unifer stopped him, they agreed to do something tonight and she isn't one to back out from a little awkwardness. 
Isha just looked at her lovingly. The Count stared at both of their gestures and sighed. He invited Isha to stay until the rain stops. Both of them were surprised at the sudden invitation. After saying that, Count Magnolia started to head towards his house. Father, wait. Unifer called out and Ishid looked at his frantic girlfriend. He whispered that he will accept her invitation and will see her tonight. To do that, she will need to light a fire in her room when she is alone. With that, he gently pushed her towards her father. The Count noticed her immediately and blocked her from the rain with his umbrella. Not caring that he may be drenched. The Count caught his daughter, and he heard Ishid excusing himself from them. The dad is sure not pleased with that push for real for real. The father and daughter duo walked together under one umbrella. The father seemed to be slightly concerned about his hospitality towards Ishid but the daughter told him that he did the proper thing. She thanked her father for coming to fetch her. Of course. No father in the world, the count stopped mid-sentence, perhaps he was thinking about his past negligence towards his daughter. Seeming to understand the count's concerns, Unifer continued the sentence. Worries not about his child? She hugged his arm more. Unifer noticed that the count was looking at her with a gloomy expression and she asked him what's wrong. Her father told her that it's nothing wrong and turned around. After that, he slowly gave her her own umbrella that he was holding since just now. She cheerfully told him that it's a short walk home and his umbrella is big enough for the both of them. The Count softly muttered that it feels awkward like this. She teased her father a bit before bursting into small giggles. He looked at his daughter laughing so comfortably, his heart also felt lighter and his lips curled into a small smile. Like that, both of them slowly walked together into their house. Meanwhile, at Ishid's abode, his butler noticed that his master came home drenched in the rain. He quickly ran towards his master and shielded him from the rain with the umbrella. However, Ishid ignored him and strode towards his manor. His master then ordered him to prepare something light. The butler was slightly confused to what is going on. His master just stripped off his wet shirt and head in the bathroom. The butler will need to use his smarts on preparing what his master wanted. Even during his bath, Ishid is still keeping tabs on whether if there's a fire in Unifer's room or not. He assumed that she was also bathing as there was no signs of a fire lit. The man wouldn't mind becoming her servant, where he could attend to her every needs, even dabbing her slim arms with smooth cloth and brushing down her thighs. I don't think it's a job for male servants, but you just be you, Ishid. He did snapped out of his trance immediately, he also realized that it is not a servant's place to covet his mistress. Servant or not, anyone who dares to touch his unifer lustfully will die by his hands. We got a simp yandere boyfriend here ladies and gentlemen. However, Ishid is Unifer's lover, he pictures himself taking her to bath, having intimate moments with her and reaching for places that only lovers could touch. Before the imagination went too rated for my YouTube channel, Ishid stopped. He was silent for a bit and at least he knows that he is too thirsty right now. He closed his eyes for a while and thought about her. Until he felt a fire lit, he shot up and went up the bathroom. The butler was shocked when his master came out suddenly with his still-soaked figure. The butler prepared a nightwear for him. Ishid was reluctant for a second when he put it on, as it was more revealing than he thought, but he did ask for something light to wear. His lips curled into a smile. The attendant felt that Ishid is in a good mood but he apologized anyway. The more shocking part is when he heard his master told him that he is going somewhere dressing like that. Ishid chugged down a green liquid from a vial and off with the flames he vanished into thin air. The butler called his master, he soon noticed the empty vial that Ishid drank. Loose clothing and birth control potion. It didn't take long for him to understand what is going on. Unifer peered at her fireplace, waiting for a certain someone to appear. Suddenly, the flames shoot up which startled her. Soon, the flames became a human silhouette, and Ishid was there hugging her. It was her first time witnessing this, and she seriously thought the flames were going to kill her. 
The male lead complimented her nice scent and she told him that she just had a bath, hands lightly stroking his hair. Out of the blue, Unifer stopped and gently pushed him a little bit, she was just checking out his scandalous nightwear and body. You're dressed so, she blushed. Oddly? Isha told her that his butler misunderstood his words and brought nightwear for him. Unifer touched his bare skin. Her blood gradually running wild, the man in front of her is so sexy. Isha took this chance and lifted her up, Unifer was shocked that she let out a squeak. The man plopped her onto the bed with him on top of her. He started gnawing his way down her neck. Unifer chuckled a bit and told him that they have all the time to take it slowly. They shared a passionate kiss and Ishid asked her if he could undress her. They both looked at each other lovingly. After a few moments of explicit touches from Ishid, Unifer wrapped her legs around him and told him that he doesn't need to ask permission every single time. With that, she took the initiate to take off his nightwear first. His body temperature from his bare skin made her feel warm. Unifer decided to be bolder and told him that he could do anything he wants. How can you say that when you don't know what I might do? Ishid is still very sweet and considerate of her feelings. She giggled a bit and flirtingly told him that she meant it. She tempted him a bit to see his reaction. Seeing the reaction was lukewarm, she tried another different temptation method, and the man finally lost it. He wanted her to show him everything, everything explicit which even Unifer was getting more embarrassed along with Ishid's actions. She told him that it's embarrassing and the man felt like a puppy which got its snack retrieved. However, he continued his handiwork. Unifer felt like the clumsy Ishid on their first night is no more, after she taught him some techniques. Seeing her cry, Ishid asked if she hated this but Unifer said she doesn't hate it at all. In fact, the girl is enjoying it okay. However, her pleasure instantly went to horror when she saw Ishid's broadsword and what's going to happen. After the bath, Ishid asked Unifer if she's tired, she pouted, commenting that he's asking the obvious and the man's imaginary dog ears drooped. Seeing her boyfriend feeling down from her teases, Unifer smiled and told him that he is cute. Ishid was surprised at the statement but his imaginary doggo ears and tail perked up from blissfulness. Instantly, he noticed the hickey marks he gave to his girlfriend, he got up and wanted to help her dress up. Unifer didn't want to be pampered too much, but he insisted. These kinds of small things made him happy. Like a dress-up doll? I guess that's pretty fun. Unifer started to get drowsy, she yawned and told Ishid that he makes her happy too as he was very pretty when he is drenched and undressed. Though, her inner thoughts said that she preferred him naked. Unifer tucked her boyfriend in bed, worried that he might catch a cold if his tummy is exposed. Isha did the same and asked if he could sleep with her. She gave the okay. May I sleep cuddling you in my arms? I said, you don't have to ask for my permission every time. She spread her hands and asked him to come nearer, he bare hugged her instead. However, he was very careful to not squash her from the hug and Unifer found it very cute. Should I sing you a lullaby? she asked. The song of the music box filled the room. Unifer snuggled and told him to consider her his bamboo wife tonight. The man was confused about the meaning but he is happy anyways. A bamboo wife is a long hollow bolster made out of bamboo. It keeps you cool upon embrace. Ishid liked the sound of that and hugged her even more. A month without Unifer is like a month without water. The reconnaissance campaign happens four times a year and it amounted to four months without his girlfriend. I guess we'll have to survive a long-distance relationship then. Unifer blurted out and Ishid suddenly recalled a memory in the past. One of his nights was dumped by his girlfriend and he was pouring out his sob story while downing more alcohol to ease the pain. That time, Ishid thought that the night was pathetic but look at how the tables have turned towards him. This is why we shouldn't judge anyone because no one knows what will happen in the future. Ishid vowed to return as fast as possible and Unifer will write to him often. She patted him and said that both of them are going to be busy peoples once the monsoon nears its end. Unifer had a mentee to take care of for a month. 
Ishid sulked that someone will be close to his baby girl during his absence. He is sad that he couldn't use healing magic, Unifer added that she wished to be able to use transportation magic. Ishid told her that his transportation magic cannot let him travel long distance, so healing magic is more useful. Unifer rebuked him with her inner thoughts, because Ishid is one of the few people in history who can use transportation magic. Ishid soon tried to imagine being Unifer's mentee, but due to his extreme fire power, he might be thrown out as a safety hazard. He wished to be a water mage. Suddenly, he remembered the silver-haired girl. He whipped out his outmost sincere smile, of course we know that it's his deadly smile, and asked about Unifer's mentee. Unifer told Raul's name and he dreaded that name. He finally knew why she was with Unifer at that time. He is anxious about Raul staying close to Unifer while he's gone. While Ishid was thinking about his rival and threat, Unifer complimented his nails that are pretty and slim. She brought their hands together and did a comparison on his pinky nails that are bigger than with her thumbnail. His heart melted once again and worries gone, he squeezed her hands lovingly. He told her that he would miss her every day. Unifer thought of a bold decision. What if I go with you? She asked and Ishid instantly rejected that offer. The reconnaissance mission will be dangerous and physically demanding, even though Unifer will be a great help to him but he needed her to be aware of the circumstances of these missions. He asked if she ever slept on cold hard ground before, without even a blanket available, as she ridden a horse for a day straight without sleep, or encountered a monster during her most vulnerable time. She was silent for a while before saying that she never experienced those. Although one has the power to fight, it doesn't mean that it will be easy. He hugged her but Unifer has her thoughts on Ishid. She knew Ishid's story from the original novel. She asked if he is okay, if it was dangerous and uncomfortable for her, it will apply to him as well. Ishid suppressed his feelings and awkwardly said that he is used to it and doesn't mind it now. She tried to empathize with the man, acknowledging that it must have been scary when he was inexperienced. Ishid was much younger than Unifer when he went to a mission, it was even years before he entered the academy. The dirt beneath him and the insects made it hard for him to fall asleep. What's worse, little Ishid's tender boyish skin was blistered from the relentless ride. And unable to bear the pain of the dried blood on his scars, he went to wash himself when a monster attacked him when he isn't armed. It forced him to kill for the first time. Ishid went silent for a while and shakingly told her that he is fine and has always been. To be honest, I don't really like it when Unifer brought up his past trauma to make him acknowledge that he was also in a vulnerable state during his first mission. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but perhaps some of you could shed some understanding on this in the comments section. She told him that her campaign will be much easier with him by her side assisting her, she is aware that it is tedious because she knows that it was difficult for him too, and she respects his hardships. And that is the start of Ishid's Yandere arc potentially. Ishid's hands trembled, must she tempt him more? His statement sounds like Unifer is leading him astray when she just wanted to be with him. Droplets of tears started flowing down Ishid's face. He wanted her to stay safe but he also wanted to stay with her, and it's tearing him apart. Unifer was astonished when he cried. Why are you crying? She doesn't know what to do. Because you made me cry. He turned away but soon tried to see her response. I have sinned. I'm so sorry. Unifer has heavily sinned for making this precious male lead cry. Ishid wasn't being serious, but Unifer looks immensely guilty. He want her to take responsibility, he wanted her to not let him go and the girl instantly glued their hands together. Only then will he sleep in peace. The next morning, Ishid tried to get down from the bed but a small portion of his leg was held captive by his sleeping Unifer. She really didn't let him go and he was on cloud nine. He looked at her lovingly and gently kissed her on the hair. He never woken up feeling so refreshed. Yet, the girl turned and held his entire body captive. Despite being very blissful from her gesture, he needed to go to work. She woke up from his voice and she felt her eyes blinded by the beauty in front of her. What a sight to wake up to. 
since it's still early, Ishid told her to go back to sleep. He is sad but he has duties to attend to. Unifer asked if he slept well, even if he isn't on his own bed. Ishid told her that he slept very soundly and she gave him a peck on the cheek. Both thanked each other for their warmth and coolness. After that, Unifer wanted him to return the kiss on her cheek. He hesitantly scooted nearer and gave her a smooch on the cheek. The girl was satisfied and said that she will see him later. With tender eyes, he told her the same thing and disappeared with the flames back to his house. Meanwhile, the heartbroken prince was waiting for him at his home. He was clearly drinking himself out from his sorrows. Your Highness? What are you doing here? Why can't I be here? Ishid's butler came in and greeted his master, and Ishid told him to retrieve his work outfit. Downing another shot of alcohol, the prince noticed that Ishid is beaming with happiness. Oh, it must be that woman. Unifer Magnolia, was it? Ishid's expression turned dark when Cashin mentioned her name. The prince noticed Ishid glaring at him, and told him to imagine how he is feeling right now as nothing is going to his favor. Of course, buddy, if you stop thinking with your lower half it won't escalate so sadly. Before this, the king threatened that he can replace Cashin if he doesn't prove himself. Ishid also had his fair share of messing up Cashin's plans. You sound upset. Ishid commented and the prince laughed. And you almost sound furious. Cashin joked, but Ishid agreed to being furious. Cashin couldn't fathom what he did wrong when Unifer was the one who jabbed him. He rambled that he would already be dragging Unifer in front of him if it wasn't for him being considerate of Ishid's feelings. Bro, I don't think you should say that in front of the person's boyfriend. Of course, Ishid took the threat very seriously and also threatened the prince to think before daring to mention Unifer's name. The prince got up angrily and the both of them fought about mentioning Unifer's name. The prince felt like their friendship is treading on thin ice right now. Ishid told him that they weren't friends to begin with. Ouch that must have hurt. He cursed at Ishid and because he hated to lose, he called Ishid a demon spawn before bumping Ishid away and leaving. Wow, what a friend to bring up Ishid's trauma like that. The atmosphere around Ishid suddenly became dark. Just that two words is enough to stir up our male leads past trauma. It was something his dad would say to him after his mother's death. So, is the dad implying that he himself is the demon and Ishid is the spawn? I don't know, but moving on. The father unalived himself, leaving an irreversible trauma to young Ishid. The boy burnt the hanging body as he cried in pain. Suddenly, his mom's voice called him from behind, she staggered a bit and grabbed him, asking him why did he burn her. The child apologized desperately, but the mom burst into flames and he could only hear her screech in pain. Ishid jolted up from his sleep, heavily panting from the horrifying dream just now. We now get Ishid's Academy POV story. After the death of his mother and father, wherever Ishid went to, there was always bad rumors about him, it was also after Ishid went on his first mission. People talked about him in fear and also a little bit of awe. No matter how long time passed, it never changed the people's view of him. Both Cashin and Ishid were down to their final year in the academy. It is a miracle that the prince could talk and talk while Ishid was just ignoring him the whole time. He is like one of those friends who isn't your friend but for some reason is also your friend. Anyways, his first encounter with our MC is during when he was reading a book under a tree. Very classic. Unifer wasn't feeling good at that time since she just possessed the original Unifer's body not long ago. She was a first year, and Ishid ignored her because her servants will come for her soon. However, when Unifer called out her mom, Ishid flinched slightly. It was clear to the readers that she was referring to her Korean mom and not Unifer's mom because she wasn't used to the body just yet. Nonetheless, Ishid doesn't know the deeper layers of the story so he thought that she was just a spoiled little brat who was sad to leave their parents. RMC wasn't used to Unifer's mana, so she felt very cold as she doesn't know how to control it yet. Ishid was annoyed by her mumbles and tried to walk away, but he was stopped by Unifer grabbing his hand. He felt water mana from the girl as she told him to save her, before fainting. 
being the gentleman he is, he caught her in his arms. It was weird for her to say save me instead of help me. And since there's only two female water mages in the first year, he guessed that she was Magnolia's daughter as he lost his wife many years ago. The girl in his arms felt cold to the touch, he used his fire magic to warm her body up and her complexion became better. Soon, Unifer's attendants found her and Ishid tossed her to her servants. He told her that she won't die from that. Albeit a little confused, Rosie thanked him anyways. After a few days, he could still feel the water mono lingering on his hand. He wanted to confirm something, and cornered an innocent water mage for a favor. The water mage nearly peed his pants when Ishid told him to lend him his hand. Ishid explained that he wanted to feel his water mana and not to threaten his life. The water mage finally let his guard down but is confused because Ishid never did that with anyone. The male lead glared and the water mage frantically did what he was told. After feeling the mana a bit, Ishid turned away and curtly thanked him. He confirmed that all water mages felt like this and not because she was special. After that, Unifer was immediately forgotten. However, the strings of fate is a weird thing. Ishid met her again when he was reading in the library. Unifer looked like she was hiding from something and didn't notice the male lead observing her through the gaps of the bookshelves. She was always there when he was reading something, huh? A voice called out to Unifer and she jolted. She thought out loud on how did the person find her. Ishid mentally rebuked that because she was dumb enough to think out loud in a library. Soon after that, he heard Unifer reassuring herself that she didn't do anything wrong to hide. She looked like a completely different person to when he first met her. He continued to eavesdrop, scratch that, continued listening to their conversation. A silver-haired girl was asking her about a room change and that Unifer's new roommate wasn't close to Unifer also. After noticing that she spoke carelessly, the silver-haired girl ran away, leaving Unifer on the spot. Unifer commented that this option is the best for both of them. Ishid deduced that the silver-haired girl wanted Unifer to chase after her but Unifer didn't. After that, Ishid noticed that Unifer was suddenly so quiet. He went to check on her and Wadaya no, he found her sleeping peacefully against the bookshelves despite being so anxious just now. What are the odds that he found her fainting at first then now found her sleeping? She must have been so exhausted to be able to fall asleep like this. A small smile crept onto Ishid's lips, even he himself was shocked that he was capable of smiling. He got up and strode towards the librarian and told him to check on Unifer. After that, he left. A reminder from the king of this country, about to cast away all weaknesses. If you would rather die than abandon the weakness, then just die. That is the oh-so-great teachings from his majesty. And Ishid was so close to obtaining his weakness, which is not ideal, as per what the king said. Time skipped towards the prince checking out his potential girlfriend. Look at that girl. Isn't she a beauty? Cashin ecstatically asked his friend who clearly doesn't care. Yeah, sure. Wow. Ishid replied without even looking. Come on, actually look at her. Cashin pestered. Ishid looked out the window and saw Unifer Magnolia with her group mates. There was also the silver-haired girl in the group. Ishid didn't even notice that he was also smiling when he saw Unifer smiled. However, the smile sent chills down Cashin's spine, he was afraid that they were courting the same girl. Ishid continued to ignore the prince but as Unifer's sixth sense kicked in and looked up. Ishid slammed the window shut, starling the prince. Ishid told Kashin to left them to do their assignments, that the prince is leaving them alone and that's why he is just staring. Besides, he is not the only boy who's watching the two as the whole academy knows that they're the prettiest. Suddenly, the prince agitatedly asked which one is Ishid into. He started first and told Ishid that he is into Ra'al but he never got an answer from his friend who just got up and left him. There's a fire brewing in Ishid's soul, he isn't pleased that everybody is watching her too. His dreams were always nearly the same, with curses and fire burning. Yet, this one was slightly different. Unifer was added to the list of characters, 
and she was regretting the fact that she met him. Then, he jolted up from his sleep. He was still safe, it was just a dream and he vowed that he won't hurt her. The fourth time he saw her was when he heard a person running towards his corner. He stopped on his tracks to prevent collision. As the person ran out from the corner, they met again, but this was the first face-to-face -face encounter with Ishid from Universe's side. She was drawn towards the person in her peripheral vision and when she looked towards him, she was completely smitten. Unifer nearly tripped because she was distracted by Ishid's beauty. He caught her, preventing her fall. The girl gasped and leaped away from him, thanking him for the save. Ishid, back in the days, was also a very quiet lad which doesn't know what to say in these situations. More so with the girl that he was interested in. Unifer stepped in and thanked him nicely and of course, checked him out but the male lead doesn't know about that. He just replied that, it's nothing. He hoped that his reply didn't sound arrogant. Instantly, he remembered his dream of her regretting that she met him. To think that he would run into her when he'll be graduating next week, he didn't want her to be involved with him. Unifer noticed that he is a fifth year and exclaimed that she is in luck. It was the first time for Ishid to hear meeting him was lucky since everyone treated him like a plague, except for Cashin, who probably doesn't have many friends to begin with. Unifer Sparkly asked him his name and Ishid didn't want her to know his identity as he was afraid. Unifer noticed that he doesn't want to mention his name so she took the initiative to introduce herself first. Ishid must have debated a lot mentally, but before he could say his own name, Cashin called out to him. He noticed Unifer's expression darkened in shock. Her demeanor immediately switched from friendly to afraid as she excused herself from him. We all know that Unifer was just scared to be involved with the male lead but Ishid doesn't know that, so he must have been tremendously sad. Poor guy. Cashin guessed that Ishid liked the brunette instead of his Ra'al. He was relieved that they didn't become love rivals. He tried to recall the brunette's name and when he spoke the name, it ticked Ishid off. Cashin could feel Ishid's overwhelming mana pressure surging into his body which made him feel sick. During this time, Ishid warned him not to speak her name lightly. The prince is mad that he dared to attack royalty so blatantly. Soon, Ishid undo his mana pressure and the prince could finally breathe again. He ordered him to stop right there and that was the end of Ishid's POV story. We came back to the present where Unifer was nearly late to work. She overslept and even Rosie overslept too. She felt like laundry when Rosie swiftly got her ready for work. She wondered if she felt tired because of the chaotic morning, or her exciting night with Ishid was to blame. She remembered that he said he loved her and she felt guilt. She thought that things will naturally follow the original novel if she let them be, that's why she was scared when Ishid told her that he loved her. Even if she tried to pair the main leads together now it won't go swimmingly like in the novel. She thinks that it would be better to end her relationship with Ishid, but perhaps Raal wasn't meant to be with Ishid. And there's the most important matter, although she likes Ishid very much but she is not sure if her feelings will turn into love. She still feels detached because this was a story within a novel. She needs to make her decision and the campaign was the best opportunity for that. She wants to go but Raal will need to accompany her since she's her mentee. It's also awkward to ask her after she rejected Raal's friendship just yesterday. And speak of the devil, Raal called out to her mentor and told her that she was worried for her. She thought that Unifer wouldn't come to work today. Unifer noticed that her mentee wanted to say something and she told her to just fire away her question. Raal awkwardly told her that she received a message this morning and she thought that it would be a good opportunity for her. Unifer scooped closer to look at the message. She was shocked that it was coincidentally the request of assistance for the mission that Ishid is going to. The silver-haired girl is afraid that it would bother Unifer if she wants to go to the mission, she just wanted to ask Unifer's opinion and if Unifer doesn't want to, Raal could go on the next campaign after finishing her one-month mentee program. Unifer thought about all the main characters present in the mission. Things could get even more complicated than it is now. But what choice does she have? She would also want to face the problem head-on as she agreed to attending the mission.
Cute Raal was so happy to hear her decision. Initially, she was worried that Unifer would be overwhelmed if she went to the expedition, but now, Unifer's decision to go made Raal happy and relieved. Unifer could write another document on her application, but she decided to just add her name as part of Raal's group. The girl was shocked, but our Rizzer Unifer said that she will be going with Raal anyway, so it's no big deal. For some reason, the story has another route open to our Unifer, the Yuri route. Anyways, Unifer wrote her name and Raal will send the application form off. The potential Yuri bachelorette felt warm fuzzies in her heart. However, she couldn't tell Unifer one thing, the mentee training will be postponed until after the expedition. Raal will have a longer time to spend with Unifer. She planned to go alone originally, but now she is going with Unifer. Ah, look at how happy she is. She briefly glanced towards Unifer and thought about telling her about the training postponement, but yeah, she didn't tell. The response letter came to the Order of the White Knights, and the vice captain whose name I keep forgetting, informed Ishid. Was Conrad his name? Anyways, before the man could say Unifer was coming too, Ishid stopped him mid-sentence by immediately approving it. Conrad, or whatever his name is, gasped and started to enrich his imagination. He thought Captain Ishid was embarrassed to show his feelings to his subordinate and used Raal for his girlfriend's disguise. If this is in real life, please don't assume anything for your boss, you might lose your job. Ishid thought he did a good job separating Raal and Unifer, but fate was literally sealed. His subordinate was pleased with his actions a la Mayo. After work, Unifer came to meet her boyfriend, they had a cute romance novel moment of running towards each other. Since Unifer asked how have Ishid been, he replied and asked her back. She wanted to tease the guy for a bit. Instead of replying, I am fine like a normal person, she replied I am not fine. Reason? She missed the man so much. Ishid felt that he replied wrongly. He changed his answer to, he is not fine either because he missed her. The conversation goes as follows. You changed your answer, the girl said. This one is the truth, he said. Then, was before a lie? She gasped like a professional actress. The man felt like the sky was crumbling down. She laughed and said that she was just teasing him. Geez, Unifer so childish. However, since the start of the conversation, Ishid is holding her dress up, as he was afraid that it would get wet. The ground is wet from the rain, by the way. The man doesn't want her going back home if her dress got wet. Unifer said that she will change her outfit either way, so she wanted them to hold hands instead. No response. Bro here is imagining some naughty stuff which involves beds and Unifer. His background panel started to turn pink. Unifer's thirst is rubbing onto him. Unifer was awkwardly waiting for her holding hands session. She reeled him back. He held her hand but her dress was lifted up even more. His button got caught in her dress. He tried to undo it, but he accidentally ripped the dress with brute force. Unifer said that he is kind of a beast for ripping her clothes. No, Unifer, you are the beast. Either way, she will change her clothes also, Ishid was confused as to why change so early. He asked her that it hasn't been long since she arrived, so why is she thinking of changing already? Apparently, Unifer forgot to tell him her agenda for the day. Ishid, by any chance and the scene cuts. Unifer was beside a horse with her dress changed to equestrian wear. She didn't tell the man that she wanted to ride a horse. Ishid quickly corrects his naughty thoughts to PG-13 innocence. Because of the lack of response, Unifer hoped that Ishid wasn't straining himself for her. Oh, Unifer, if you knew what he was thinking about. But again, since it's Unifer, 
she might not mind it. She said that Ishid is reliable, and she needs some practice to ride in the forests. The man was confused. She dropped the bomb and told him she is going to the campaign with them. Ishid was mad that anyone dared to withhold this piece of information from him. Let's have a few moments of silence to pray for this man. One, two, three. Okay, continuing the story, Ishid's rage is enough to burn her application, and Unifer won't let it. Unifer used distraction with Golden Award actress skills to Ishid. It was really effective. Unifer used Pinky Promise to not further this issue. Ishid was affected by the status debuff of guilt. Unifer used fake tears. Ishid's special defense is lowered. Okay, I played too many Pokemons. Anyways, the man gave in, Unifer smirked. The contract was sealed and delivered. The poor man gasped in realization. Unifer is reading him like an open book. She said that he could just help her, so don't worry so much. He sighed and it reminded Unifer of her parents. Unifer awkwardly told him that she could just stick to him for the whole campaign. She noticed that she chose the right words to say and attacked more. Since next to you is the safest place in the world. She gave him a hug. I will protect you with my life. Ishid told her with a serious face, Unifer gave him her reassurance. After that, our girl tied her hair up to a high ponytail. It was Ishid's first time seeing her tie her hair up. Instead of being shy, Unifer just did what she did best, flirting with our male lead. Although she was always the one flirting, this time, she felt her heart tickle. Don't worry, she is just getting smitten by the male lead. She got up the horse perfectly, her success was worth a national holiday celebration. Just kidding, at least she won't fall off the horse during the ride. Sharp-eyed Unifer noticed her strongest fire mage was getting hot even in this chilly weather. She asked about the Unifer crystal, she told him to put it around his neck to cool down. Ishid used up the mana within the crystal, but Unifer said that she would charge it for him any time he needed it. Raya was called and it brought the Unifer crystal. While Unifer was greeting the big bird, the horse, which had never seen such a huge birdie, got scared and started to go crazy. Even during a dangerous situation, Unifer could still imagine a cliché storyline where the male lead saves the female lead from a frightened galloping horse. She braced herself for a cliché romance situation with a tinge of danger. But nothing happened. It should calm the horse down instantly, not even a horse could resist the power of the male lead. The male lead is just too competent for his own, her thoughts slipped out. She confirmed her statement that being next to him is the safest place to be. After charging the Unifer crystal, they galloped through the forest, with Unifer in the lead. It has been an hour since they start, and her butt hurts so much. It's a good thing she tried to practice because it will be even a longer ride during the expedition. She thought about making a gel cushion for herself. Ishid at the back was observing his girlfriend, with his experienced eyes, he deduced that she was exerting herself. He caught up beside her and called her, he learned a thing or two about his girlfriend's personality, so he didn't go for a direct ball. He suggested they stop for lunch, Unifer was a little out of it. Knowing her personality and that she didn't like to trouble people about herself, he said that he's a little hungry. It worked wonders because Unifer immediately stopped the horse. We could learn a thing or two from this, remember to use this technique to get our loved ones to stop overexerting themselves. Of course, please use it with good intentions. Continuing on, Unifer brought a tuna and a ham sandwich. Initially, Unifer wanted to eat on the horse to mimic being on the actual campaign, but Ishid who was worried about her exerting herself, 
lied to her that the expedition team mostly rested comfortably when they decided to stop and rest. She was perplexed, but he reassured her. Since Ishid is the experienced one, she trusted him. While she was trying to get down the horse, the worried man held her affectionately and helped her get on the ground. She complained lightly about his way of helping her, but he is just helping her innocently with no bad intentions of touching her or what not. Either way, her heart went doki doki. After choosing their respective sandwiches, they found a nice boulder to sit on and eat lunch. While walking towards the boulder, Unifer tried to gaslight herself that her heart went crazy because of Ishid's beauty and nothing more. They sat down under the foliage of the greens. Ishid conveniently took Unifer's sandwich and she was stunned. But the man was just helping her unwrap her sandwich. To be honest, this sandwich picture looks like a hamburger. Ishid unwrapped his own food and chomped on the sandwich. The way he munches on the sandwich reminded Unifer of a squirrel. As they were eating, Unifer noticed Ishid ate his food quite fast, so she tried to catch up to him. Now, she is the squirrel. The man asked why she was eating so fast. She gulped down the food. Because speed is life while on the move, she said ever so confidently. Ishid told her that they have time to eat, eat slowly to not get indigestion. Unifer thought that if she got indigestion it might be troublesome for everyone so it makes sense. Although, that's not what Ishid meant when he said that. While the man was staring at the blue sky, his girlfriend declared that she had finished eating. Ishid turned towards her and laughed that the girl had some food left beside her mouth. He did the romance novel cliché of wiping the food off her mouth. I think it was already good because he didn't proceed to eat it, which is kinda creepy. The girl felt her heart go doki-doki again. This isn't good. If it comes to a situation where I have to send off Ishid, she mumbled, she didn't know if she would be able to let him go. Menacingly, Ishid came asking about what she meant. Unifer's thoughts went a thousand miles. She had it all wrong. How could she think that a person like this would be easy to manage? Her current situation felt like a black lion took a liking to her. However, beasts were still beasts, no matter how innocent and sweet they are. What would happen when something of importance to a beast gets stolen? He would rain down his ultimate rage. I'm sorry, but this lion's face is hilarious to me. Anyways, Unifer decided to showcase her actress skill of playing innocent again. Silence. She tried her best to redirect the conversation away from the actual meaning. She made the conversation to be that she is sad to send him home. Technically, her previous sentence of sending him away can also be applied like this. Smart Unifer. She will eventually send him home so she is sad. He was convinced and she continued her attacks again. My goodness, were you not going to send me home either? She teasingly asked and nudged the man playfully. Ishid couldn't rebuke anything because he did imagine some things of his desires. Suddenly, the girl asked if they should practice camping out here if he doesn't want her to leave. The man is seriously considering her offer for real for real. She, of course, noticed his thoughts and chuckled. She would like to camp with him but she needed to go home today, as someone was waiting for her. Those words made the male lead raise his high murder alert. Luckily he didn't make it happen because he would be wiping off his future father-in-law. He is scared if she knew what he was thinking a while ago. Yeah, Ishid, if she knew she would scream yandere behavior. The father was concerned because he knows she is meeting Ishid today. He was even watching her from the window when she left. He swiftly closed the curtains when they made eye contact. What are the odds of having a yandere and its sundere around you, huh? And Unifer needed to tell her father that she is going to the campaign. 
Unifer patted for Ishid to sit down, they were going to sleep under the same sky for a month soon. She asked if he likes looking at the sky. Ishid doesn't know but he tends to look at it often. Unifer said that she liked it, and did the camera picture thing with her fingers. I don't know how to describe it, but just look at the video to see, for my audio listeners. Time for a romantic quote from Unifer. When doing this, it feels like I'm touching the clouds and stars. When you do this for 100 mornings, you've touched 100 clouds. And when you look at it for 1,000 nights, you've touched 1,000 nights. Since the sky is different every day. Sheesh indeed. Unifer urged the male lead to try it. As he tried it, she was stunned that his angles for the camera motion are sharp and perfect. She commented that he's even good at these things too. Because the girl was so close to him and it was also the right moment, he started the smooch, she was slightly surprised but soon wrapped her hands around him as the kiss deepened. Unifer's words of leaving him were still haunting his mind. He squeezed her more. He mentally cried for her to not leave him. Ah, I'm gonna cry. It was night time when Unifer came home, and her whole body was aching. She glanced up and saw her father swiftly turned away from her and started to walk inside. Unifer happily called out to her father as the man flinched, but he continued ignoring her. She called out a series of fathers before getting pissed. She told him that she needs to tell him something and will wait in front of his room. The count finally stopped, Unifer finally caught up to him as she huffed and puffed. The count looked at her sorry state. He asked if she was okay. Unifer just said that she overdid it a little. He was pissed at Ishid for letting his daughter be in the sorry state. His daughter dropped the bomb again to the second person today saying that she's going to the campaign on suppressing monsters. The girl was happily telling the dad about the expedition, unaware that he was both thunderstruck and worried. Thus, Ishid garnered two hatreds from his future father-in-law in a day. However, the Count felt like he had no right in caring about the daughter he neglected. If you've said everything you wanted to say, you can go on your way now, he turned around. Another character that keeps his feelings bottled up I see. Suddenly, Unifer told him that she was sad. Sad? Just because of that? The man was brought back to when Unifer was a little child. She was also chasing his back calling him. When she caught up to him, she hugged his leg like her life depended on it. However, the Count slapped her hand away. Haven't you heard, child? I am not your father. We are back to the present, and the Count is saying that he disappointed her yet again. She grabbed his hand, she told him that she didn't say she was disappointed. She was just sad that she will be away from her father and home, and would like to spend some time with him before she leaves. The man said that he is available for two hours after work. Yay to some father-daughter bonding moment the next day. Unifer was hugging her father's awkward hand as they walked the streets. The man was so awkward that it's kind of funny. The daughter was hungry, and the man used the nearest eatery as an escape from the awkward situation. It was coincidentally the restaurant where Raal and Cashin clashed. Unifer was avoiding this restaurant but maybe today is okay because she's with her father. The daughter recommended the best course in this restaurant. The waiter still remembered her. Ah, and this gentleman must be your father, the waiter greeted. Yes, we're on a father-daughter date. As soon as she said that, her father coughed out his water and Unifer panicked. After the count was okay, they ordered their meal. However, the cheesecake from that set menu was out, only peach sherbet was available. Before Unifer could say anything, the father told him that she is allergic to peaches. 
The girl was so shocked that the Count is a father that remembers his daughter's allergies. Thus, orange sherbet was ordered. After eating, Unifer asked the Count his opinion on the meal. Seeing his daughter so eager, he told her that he enjoyed it. Like every other working adult, we all do like footing the bill for our beloved parents. That's what Unifer did. The Count was confused, he knows she is working, but it is easier to put it on the family's tab. He doesn't know, this is how we have a sense of accomplishment and be filial to our parents. However, the Count was worried about his daughter's wallet and went to see the bill. The daughter reassured him that the whole point of making money is to use it for something important. The father was confused that a mere dinner is considered important. The girl hugged his hand again, stating that their daughter and father bonding dinner is worth far more than the money spent. The Count never had something like this happen. Unifer told him that she would treat him any time. The dad said that they could go somewhere affordable. She told him that she will treat him to fine dining any time. They are so cute I'm having cavities. Besides, I'll be making lots of money soon, she chirped. The father frowned because the money will come from the deadly campaign. He tiredly sighed, his daughter thought that he was unwell. She said that they could go home now if he is unwell. I thought we were going to stop by somewhere, he asked. She initially wanted to take a walk to a lake, but they didn't have to. She even cracked a joke that they could walk all the way to the moon beyond the horizon if he wanted. The dad was speechless and awkward silence engulfed them. Unifer was embarrassed with her own cold joke. On the other hand, the dad thought moon beyond the horizon is her favorite coffee shop name. To be honest, that name for a coffee shop is good too. Suddenly, Unifer was drawn to a blonde-haired man who was tossing a coin in a fountain and making a wish. That's nothing different as people do that every time, the problem is he's using a gold coin to wish. Because Unifer was silent for a while, her father called out to her. The blonde man paused a bit and looked up. Unifer felt like she was looking at an angel. However, his charms won't work on her as she was graced with the presence of Ishid and Ra most of the time. She replied to her father and went up the carriage, she decided to ignore the angel because it's not her business if he gets pickpocket. After arriving home, she wanted to have tea time with daddy. She went out to bring the tea as her father waited there awkwardly. Ishid, who had been unknowingly reeling in hate from the future father-in-law, called out to Unifer from the fireplace. Such a bad timing to call your girlfriend Ha-Ishid. The dad was annoyed that he dared seek his daughter out this late night. He put out the flames and the call was cut off. The father was pleased. Help, this is so cute and funny. Finally, the daughter who didn't know that her dad cut off her boyfriend's call, came in with tea. She served tea to her father and said that tea at night helps her relax. For me, tea at night helps me have insomnia. Unifer asked her dad if having tea together is quite nice. The man looked at her, lost in his thoughts. Before telling her to stay safe, although a little bit awkward, he told her to take care. Unifer smiled and told him that she will. They had a peaceful father and daughter tea time together. Did we forget something? Yes, of course. Ishid, who was stunned that his call was abruptly cut off. He soon started to fade in black and white again, asking what he did wrong. The man read his work materials, waited, and paced around the fireplace. Finally, his baby girl called him. She apologized to him that a breeze put out the fire because she was having tea with her father with the window open. The man quickly put two and two together that the count put out the fire, as flames connected by magic cannot be put out by mere wind. He is relieved that it wasn't Unifer who put out the flames, but is unsettled that the count heard him. 
To add to the sadness, Unifer wanted to sleep and ended the call. The man dropped to his bed and soon drifted into dreamland, or should I say, nightmare. I swear this guy always has the saddest dream. In the dream, he was hugging his darling Unifer. Abruptly, they were yanked apart by the Count shouting for him to stay away from his daughter. It was another nightmare night for poor Ishid. Soon it was departure day, Unifer was not pleased that they were having a meeting at dawn. She would take a nap in her carriage until she arrived at the destination. Vaguely, she could hear someone calling her and some conversations. When she opened her eyes, the first thing she saw was her potential Yuri Root Raal, smiling at her. If you are not bought by the Yuri Root, look at what Raal is thinking. This is some potential lover behavior, is it not? She even rubbed Unifer's face. Are you guys buying it right now? Sorry, anyways, Unifer got up and gave herself a slap on the cheek to wake up, before going into serious mode. The meeting was as silent as a grave which made Unifer sleepy again. She questions Raul's chirpiness in this early morning. We get the information that the supposed female lead have old people body clock. Unifer complained that she is sleepy 24-7, no matter how early she sleeps. Raul liked the fact that they are conversing like normal friends. Raul noticed that Unifer's hair isn't tied nicely, Unifer said that because she was in a hurry just now. After a few seconds of failing to know which side the hair is falling off, it resulted in Raul helping Unifer to tie her hair. I'm a girl who ties her hair up, I can feel where the hair isn't tied up so I think it's totally unnecessary but is totally necessary for the Yuri root expansion. LOL, I will stop that for now. Ishid was staring and emitting dangerous heat as he watched the Yuri root unfold. Okay, I'm not stopping that joke, sorry. Anyways, the bro needs to chill for a bit. But even though I said that, he has his reasons. Flashback time to academy days, he heard a passing conversation from students. One said that Unifer was a bit cold. The other stated that she was nice and friendly to them. Wait, I can't tell if they are a girl or a boy. The bow is for a girl, but with the shorts? Anyways, not important, they were saying that they felt bad for Raal who was always being avoided by Unifer. Ishid couldn't fathom why Unifer should get along with Raal when she was the one pestering Unifer. He's annoyed that the students were taking Raal's side so naturally. The short hair student said that the friend who is complaining is just jealous of Unifer because he likes Raal. Yeah, they are boys, my bad. The friend was flustered but soon the short haired student walked away, stating that he doesn't like to talk about people behind their backs. I like him already. Since that time, the male lead hated the female lead. To him, she was unbearable. At that moment, he was drawn towards a hand waving towards him. Unifer was happy waving at him. Oh God, Raal at the back darkened. Anyways, the male lead's deadly aura soon was replaced with pink sparkles. Conrad at the back commented about his captain's mood swing. Even the other subordinates are weirded out that love could change a person. Slowly, murmurs and whispers about their captain filled the once quiet meeting room, and Conrad dreaded that the captain would flip. Yeah, I'm calling him Conrad because I think it is his name, I'll change if it isn't. Continuing, instead of flipping, Ishid was happy. Conrad finally knew that the power of love is real. Raal's expression darkened when she saw Unifer's attitude changed with Ishid. I mean, he is her boyfriend. She is turning yandere already, boys and girls. While the male lead was wooing his girlfriend with his work attitude, and the supposed female lead glaring at her, rival? Unifer was just checking out her hot and competent boyfriend. Before the meeting was adjourned, Unifer raised her hands for a question. 
she felt like a clueless schoolgirl asking a question right before the class ended. She stood up and stated that there are additional risk factors this year for the campaign. And that is the heat wave. This is why the White Knight employed extra water mages this campaign. Their issue is when the water mages and everyone is asleep. The Tropical Night Unifer presented the same fabric used for baroque tents and latex from a rubber tree. She applied the latex on the material and folded it over. She asked Ishid to light the fabric on fire. The vice captain is agitated because the captain doesn't like to use magic in public. Because it is Unifer, Ishid obliged. And with Unifer's guidance, he successfully did what she told him to. She squeezed his hands and thanked him. With that, she presented them with a waterproof fabric for their tents. Ishid at the back was still in a daze about what happened. Nobody feared his flames, and he could still feel her warmth when she squeezed his hand. After the meeting, Unifer and Ishid went back to Ishid's office. The girl plopped herself on the sofa. She needed to calm herself down from the nervous presentation earlier. Just now, she presented the waterproof cloth and gel cushion seat for the campaign. As she was lying on his thighs, she snuggled a bit and thanked for his help. The man flinched slightly and blushed. Instantly, Unifer shot up. She asked the man if he remembered their agreement on the day of departure. The man was imagining some blurry blurry scenes which cannot be aired on YouTube. The girl sighed and said that she would help him remember. The man just let her caress his cheek and closed his eyes in anticipation. A flow of cold and comfortable mana flowed into him. Ishid finally came to the realization that she meant to do mana purification today. Unifer, your thirst is rubbing off Ishid right now. Albeit a little disappointed, the purification is comforting. Unifer Jumpity jumped and asked for him to do the same for her. Still not comfortable with himself doing the mana purification, he still tried his best to perform it. Soon, all of the campaign participants were summoned in front of the king. It should notice that Unifer's father is also there as the secretary for foreign affairs. His future father-in-law glared at him with an icy stare, before looking away. Ishid was confused. Shortly, the king came in. His shoes and robes pattern nearly blinded my sight. The tension in the room skyrocketed. Cashin really takes after his father's looks with the red hair and yellow eyes. Unifer and the crowd had similar thoughts, that the king is scary. The king asked Ishid about why he didn't try to monopolize it because it would garner hundreds of millions of gold pieces. Even Unifer thought that the person was a fool for declining to sell something worth so much. However, she soon knew that the fool was her, and they were talking about the waterproof cloth. The king called her out. Unifer, who was well versed in these socialization skills, as well as the king's personality knew what to say. She told him that she would never have thought of these things if she didn't participate in the campaign. Thus, the reason she was able to participate in the campaign is because she was born in Rovadia. She acted wholeheartedly for the power-hungry king. She stated that the waterproof cloth belongs to Rovadia as well as to the king of Rovadia. The king was pleased. He turned towards Count Magnolia and asked what he should bestow for Unifer's contribution. The count kindly rejected the king with a roundabout speech. Geez, this stingy king is just take no give ha. Huh? Ishid, who was with the crowd, clenched his fists silently. I'm calling the king stingy stingy stinky, the stinky king because it sounds more demeaning to me. Stinky poopy king adjourned the meeting and the knights headed out to their destination. They are in a nice formation with Ishid leading the group, the knights in straight formation groups and the water mages at rear end. It's been three hours since they left the capital, 
Unifer is feeling the toll of the hours of horse ride. If she is already amazed with Ishid, she's even more amazed by the man now. Raal commented that they are elites because there's not a single straggler amongst the knights. After that, Raal complimented Unifer that she did good back then. She was talking about the stinky king. He's a little... Out there, you know. Raal casually badmouthed the stinky king. Unifer gasped and looked around anxiously. Raal chuckled and reassured her that nobody's listening. But I'm okay? How do you know if you can trust me? Unifer asked. Should I not then? The female lead attacked with blue sparkles. Unifer felt her heart skip a beat. That man always has such an intense look in his eyes, like he has to pee. Raal imitated the stinky pee king. Now, he is more stinky because he peed. By the way, holding in your pee is bad for your kidney, just saying. While Unifer tried to hold in her laughter, someone else laughed behind them. Both the girls turned, Raal recognized the man as Michael. It was the angel man that Unifer saw before. The man didn't attend the meeting because he overslept, and he just caught up to the group. Raal commented that he is always late on important days. Michael beamed that although he is late on important days, he is never late for important moments. If the man's personality is nice, can our Raal be with him? Cashin is just a walking red flag, literally with that hair color. Unifer put her transmigration brains to work. According to the law of cliches in novels, the majority of handsome men will like the female lead. She is pretty sure that he is a male supporting character. She is pretty sure that this angel was spat out from the main love story because Cashin and Ishid took all of the spotlight. Unifer felt like she had met this guy somewhere. She stared and he noticed. The man is so pretty but I still stan Ishid. Unifer finally remembered him, he was the man who tossed a gold coin in the wishing fountain. She accidentally blurted out that he is the beautiful one. Ishid at front flinched and glared at the fellow who caught his girlfriend's eyes. Isn't Ishid at the utmost front of the group? How did he listen to the conversation at the rear end? Michael thanked Unifer for complimenting him. The angel was called Michael Sunoff, the young Count of Sunoff. Why is his family name pronounced like that? Ishid is irritated that he needs to stay as a vanguard. Conrad has a lot to say but couldn't. He could only cry. Soon, Ishid commanded them to halt. With Ishid's orders, the white knight spread to both sides. Suddenly, a horrifying growl was heard and the ground cracked. A knight shouted that it was a rumbada. It looked like a big lizard with sharp fangs. They were astonished that a monster this strong was already so near the capital. Ishid hollered for the inexperience to run away from the monster. However, a knight was already caught in its claws. Ishid lets Conrad command the other teams. Oh, so he is called Conrad, yay. Ishid unsheathed his sword, in a slash, he cut off the arms that were holding the knight. The creature screeched in pain. While it's distracted from pain, it should quickly pull the unconscious knight from the severed claws. He called another knight and tossed the unconscious one onto them. Suddenly, the monster was trying to lay its grubby claws on Ishid. With a swift motion, he slashed another arm. A rumbada possesses fast regenerative abilities so the arm that was severed before was starting to grow back again. Ishid swiftly cut off the hand that was trying to grow back. The severed limbs nearly fell onto the knights that were trying to help. The man braced for impact but his colleague told him to pull himself together as she uses wind magic to hold the arm afloat. Soon, the rumbada was lying without its limbs and the knights finally could attack the monster. 
the enemy was burnt and every single part of the monster was tear apart to prevent regeneration. However, the host of the monster fled during the chaos and they needed to find it ASAP. Ishid had a bad feeling and muttered Unifer's name. At Unifer's side, she was healing a few wounded knights when she heard the bush rustling. It was a cute white bunny, she cheerfully called for it to come nearer. The bunny looked at her with its beady red eyes. At that time, Ishid came running towards her. The scene he saw was the little bunny becoming a huge monster wanting to devour his girlfriend. Of course, it didn't succeed, who do you think Unifer is? She's our MC for goodness sake. She used her water magic to take it down. Ishid dealt the finishing blow. He asked her how she knew when she was inexperienced. She told him that it was common sense because why would a random bunny show up in all the commotion? Ishid noticed that her face was covered with blood. Before he could help her wipe it off, Raal came rushing in and wiped Unifer's face instead. Wow, she didn't even hesitate to steal Ishid's spotlight. The male lead was pissed. Ishid seeping out deadly aura was witnessed by a random angel, who coincidentally found a nice spot against the tree and watching the love drama in front of him unfold. And I will leave you guys here. This video stopped at chapter 40 of the Manawa if you didn't want to wait for part 3. Thank you everyone who got to this point. Thanks for the likes and support for the channel. I will see you in the next one.